Today's show is brought to you by Crane Shares. Michael, something momentous might be in the works. Uh, Brendan Ahern, who writes ChinaLastNight.com, which is Queen Shares, I guess, what would you call it, a newsletter? Yeah. An email? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Brendan is reporting that President Xi stated that China is willing to work with the United States, along with President Biden's comment that the U.S. does not seek conflict with China. The positive comments paved the way for a meeting in Indonesia at the G20. The heads of both Germany and France will also visit China next month. When is that? Next I don't month? really see news like this anywhere else, but I get all of my information about what's happening in Asia from Brendan Hearn. From I, did, I, I do the same. Three-minute okay. reads. So this is the kind of stuff that he's putting out that maybe you don't read um, on the Wall Street Journal or maybe you don't see on CNBC, but pretty much every day there's something momentous happening in China, in Asia, with the Hang Seng in Hong Kong, with the Yuan. Brendan Ahern is covering it. I would urge our listeners to go to ChinaLastNight.com, subscribe to the email blast. And while you're there, if you're interested in Queen Share's suite of ETFs, all of the information is available to you. Sound good? You still do? Are you still here? Sounds great. What do you mean? Sounds great. All right. Thanks to Queen Shares. Oh, almost. almost. This should have been right. the 69th. I agree. Let's welcome to welcome to the biggest podcast in finance. What do you think about that statement? I think oh it's my true. god, I'm sorry. No, I, you, I'm watching the video of Elon with the sink. Is this for real? <laughs> it's not none of it's funny. I don't I don't get any of that humor. Um I like that he has a good sense of humor though. Because the richest person on earth, you would not think, would also be like always inclined to make the joke. He will always go for the joke. And I kind of I kind of like that. What do you think is about that? Is that a good sense of humor? He has a sense of humor. He has a sense. Of, there is a joke. sense of humor. Always always a good joke. Yeah. Um, that's that's what uh that's that's what uh, Dan Greenhouse did to us last week. I go on air. You fired up to be here. He's like, let me put it this way. I am aware that I'm here. Okay. <laughs> you got the first thirty seconds of the show. Yeah. So Sias, another Sias guy. Another Sias guy. That's right. right. All right. Uh, it's all a right. Very Long Island podcast. It, ver- it very much. It very much is. It's inescapable that I'm from Long Island. So is Michael Barry Ridholtz, also from Long Island. Uh, very, you're I'm from feeling Long so left. Where are you out. from? Where'd you go? Uh, Richmond, Virginia. Uh, same thing. Same Long Island, the South. Yeah. yeah. What's the difference? <laughs> Uh, all right, we're so excited to have you guys here today. When we planned this, uh, I, it feels like three years ago now. Mm-hmm. I just said, like, the two of you as a duo in whatever that you do. And what was the last thing I heard you guys do together? Were you on Joe's show? Joe and Tracy's show? Or? We were on Joe and Tracy's show. Yeah. yeah, you were Joe. Matt was Joe. Matt right. played yes, the role of Joe then. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, we did a book event uh, for my book launch. Matt was my in conversation buddy. That's um, right. and Not the bookstore, anywhere, as far as I know, as far as we know, they did record it, but I think that recording is lost they to the lost pages. It, yeah. yeah. Um, they, blockchain fixes us. They, <laughs> they congratulated us on being the rolling stones of book launches. Okay. Of the McNally Jackson seaport. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, actually we, we, we wrote intros for you. Let me do that real yeah. quick. Ooh. Mary Childs is the author of the bomb King, a best selling book about Bill Gross and Pimco. Mary also co-hosts the planet money podcast at NPR. Prior to that, she was a senior reporter at Barron's, the Financial Times, and Bloomberg News. You've you've done them all. I've made no the New rounds, York yes. Times. No New York Times yet. No. No d- deal book never called you, or I can't confirm they never called, but we, <laughs> I right. have never worked there. But you've you've been you've been in the mix for a while. Yes, thank okay. you. When did when did I meet you? Oh wow, twenty long time ago. Twelve. Eleven. Yeah, yeah. Twelve, something like that. You remember when like we all used to hang out? Yes, so remember how that. You guys don't like me anymore. I don't think anyone hangs out anymore. I have a child now, so that yeah. that's what it is. Yeah. yeah, we were all, we were all like late twenties, cool. early thirties, and we would like do stuff. And it was normal to get drinks Cardiff, after work. Cardiff is trying to keep it going, but I feel like nobody ever replies to the email. No, that's so the most tragic thing email. I've heard. <laughs> You're automatically out on everything, right? I said I'm not on that email. Okay, let me do you. Matt is a Bloomberg opinion columnist. If you're not reading Matt, I don't even know what your story is. I think uh, you, it's been said that you are the best writer or the best columnist in finance. I know you don't say that, but about. it has been said about you know. like many times. The Times so, said it. The, t- the New York Times said it. Uh, your daily newsletter, which I read every word of, is called Money Stuff, and it covers a wide range of financial-related topics. He is a former, you are a former Goldman investment banker and m and lawyer at Wachtell, Lipton, Rosen, and, and another cats. Jew. Cats, yeah. All right. Um, <laughs> let me tell you the first question. <laughs> True or false? 
By the way, so you wrote that intro last week because I now am also the best-selling author of the crypto story in Bloomberg. But we're going there. We're going to get there. Cover model. Doing a plug every time. We have a little bit of ground to cover first. True or false? Uh Post financial crisis deal breaker, starring Matt Levine and Bess Levin, was the greatest financial media site. Of all time, it true or false? Really, You're not. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, I, mean, it, I loved true. it. It was. It was. Best and I called it our art project. It, Dude, that was, was fucking crazy. The so two good. of you were dueling back and forth. It was so good. I loved it. You, were you posting like three, four, five times a day, or Me? is that just no? My, that's she was. Right. She was. Yeah, because she, she was, would do. She was a blogger. She was like a true blogger. She was a. She was the first in my in my opinion. First, like true blogger. Not like the the guys working in finance, like Barry or me, but right. like <laughs> just somebody covering finance. I think she's before. She was like a gawker blogger, but about finance. Right. And that's before Alphaville, probably, right? Probably, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was incredible. You ever, you ever like, you ever think of like doing something with, with Bess again? Like, yes. But okay. I mean. She's all Trump now. Like <laughs> all, all Trump all the time. <laughs> right. That's one way to put it. But that's. But it's a big business. There'll be another financial crisis. She'll come back to us. We might be in one now. We might, yeah. We might have already started one. No, I thought we unrecessed. Ah, for the for the time being. Anyway, for people that maybe weren't reading financial shit at the time, um, you were, how long you we missed out? Because the whole the site is like died. Yeah, no. <laughs> so, I mean, like the, but like 2011 the to around. like 20 what 13. That's when I was there. That was your. Okay. She was she was amazing. For she years was amazing, but you but that was where that. you were discovered, like yeah, by discovered people. Well, yeah. yeah. No, okay. That's right. That's right. And then Bloomberg just came with a bag, and you were like, um, <laughs> "Where do I sign?" Bess, Bess, this has been fun, but yeah. I'm going to do this for a career now. Yeah. All right. That's I got it. Accurate. Yeah. All right. Uh, but she's at Vanity Fair, so you yes. guys are all right. Shout to Bess. Uh, I thought that was amazing. Um, so, the, all right, that was your big intro. Let's talk about Bitcoin. You just wrote <laughs> a forty thousand word magnum opus mm-hmm. on Who's magnum. <laughs> All right, but but you made one mistake. Yeah, the title it. is "What is Bitcoin?" The correct title of your piece is "What even is Bitcoin?" So the title is not "What is Bitcoin." The title is the crypto story. But uh, All right, I'm going to leave that. The out. colloquial title is "What?" Yeah, was crypto. we called it "What What is Crypto?" Or sometimes "What was Crypto?" But the actual title on the All right. So time out. So so I read that you are only the second columnist in 93 years to do the cover story for Business Week. No, no, no. What the hell was that? It's the second time that Business Week has taken an entire issue and handed it to one writer. Oh, there's nothing else in the physical (laughs) magazine? Stop it. It's so good, though. (laughs) What else would you need? So who was the other? Who was the other? The other was Paul Ford, who wrote a a, 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 a novella called uh, What is Code, which is why we called this What is Crypto. Uh, Nobody got that. No, we well, that's a, it's not the actual <laughs> title. We like internally. We so can. how how could you write forty thousand words and be all no, no, and and not, no 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 <laughs> and not have an opinion on Bitcoin? Uh, this is give my us, job. Give me something. I'm an opinion no, columnist who something. has no opinions. Like, you come I, out of it somewhat constructive. Yeah, I think I'm somewhat constructive. I think that I am like very skeptical. Like I feel like it's a very like hyped thing full of Ponzi schemes, and I am I try to be super aware huh? of that, but. I also think it's interesting. It's full of interesting people. And like the like if you put enough like smart people sort of working on like there's enough enthusiasm for it among smart people that it feels like it's gotta be generative of something and it has been generative. I have been of saying things. that and I keep hearing other people say that, but the longer this goes on for with no usable consumer application, um, the more like absurd that statement is going to be. I hear you. And I think that one thing that I sort of took away from this is that uh you don't really need a consumer application, right? I mean, I, that's like the sort of what the VCs are saying, but like um, they weren't saying that shit three years ago, though. No, I mean they were, they were talking about. They, no, sorry, they were, they were they were they were pitching. They are pitching consumer applications, but like I do think that like and and a thing that I spent a lot of time on in the piece is like uh, like the crypto financial system is really fun for crypto people yes. and and it attracts a lot of people from traditional finance, and I think that they often think that they have built a better financial system just from a perspective of like trading and like usefulness and like ease of setting yeah. things up and like openness and and like you know collateral liquidation and all this like mechanical stuff and if you believe them and they believe themselves like the next step is to sort of ingest some of the regular financial system into that and so like all these crypto exchanges are like we're going to wrap and tokenize stocks because that'll be a better experience for trading stocks than the stock exchange yeah and if they're right then like like if all you've done is built like 
you know, industrial financial technology. Like, that's something. That's not nothing. That's a big business. Yeah, well, but what, if, well, what, what makes the coin go up, though? <laughs> that's the, that's the that's problem with that. Yeah, I hear you. But, but Matt, so if they tackle settlement or if they replace DTC or whatever, those are all very useful things. And probably blockchain is better for a lot of it may, or at least as good. But it's a huge pain in the ass. And what does that have anything it's to not do with it? I think they yet. would say it's not a huge it's not done I think yet. they would say compared so to like setting up an ISDA with JP Morgan, setting okay. up a hedge fund on the on you know on Ethereum is, is easy. Right? Okay. So well, they would say it's not a pain. It's 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 trade-offs, but I think um and then like what makes the coin go up? Well, you know, you have like this DeFi stuff where it's like the coin is interlinked with the actual. Well we'll get to, let's, we'll get to the coins. Yeah. But as far as like real world application and all Matt, what if the crypto financial system doesn't have to build all the way back down to the real world to be valuable? What if the world can come to crypto? Yeah, sure. Did you read the? Who, did who you even that? read the piece? No, he, no, he didn't. He didn't. That's no, fine. but that's how Matt ended it. I didn't. No, read no spoilers. It. No spoilers. So. I wow. didn't read it because like I'm into girls. <laughs> no, I listen. I I Women. will I will probably read it, but I wanted to talk to you about it because I read people writing about. There are people writing articles about. He your read. Article. The, he read people that. He read, read the headline. Yeah. But the takeaway is the. I told you this. The crypto boys love you, even though you're not like one of them. You're not one yeah. of them, and you're not trying to be, and you don't pander to them. Right. I find that fascinating because the crypto community is not known for both sides ism. Like they no. don't like when people are skeptical. But I think that. I mean, I think I make an effort to understand it and to try to uh, take it seriously. Yeah, and I also think that like you know someone tweeted. Bitcoin and Ethereum went up the day it published, and someone yeah, Matt Levine, is, is Matt Levine pumping our bags? And I was like, well, <laughs> they, like it, at some level, if you publish forty thousand words about crypto, then like that's just good for crypto. Like they make money, you know. So. Has anybody from uh, Washington reached out to you from either party because they're constantly talking about creating rules for crypto and who's going to regulate it? Do, uh, do they want you in these conversations at all? Uh, I'm not sure that nobody has reached out to me, but I'm not like That's I'm not like talking answer. to Joe Biden every week. You know, no, un, 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 I don't yet. think Joe Biden even knows that this exists. Or Gary Gensler, but uh, yeah, but yeah, yeah. I mean, I've, okay, no, but, I mean, this basically no. It would because from my perspective, it would seem that if securities regulators want to make the case to uh, Congress that they should have the the leadership role in regulating this, like the stuff that you are doing is making it more digestible. So that they can make those points, like I feel like that's that's an obvious thing. I feel like they're gonna take one of Matt's lines. ICOs are like if the Wright brothers sold air miles to finance inventing the airplane. That's one of the lines I'm proud of, and I keep quoting myself. That's, that's pretty. That's pretty good. Uh, all right, you wrote, you wrote, you read the piece though. You wrote some questions for. for I Matt. Never, I just I literally took Matt's freaking uh, line so we could talk about them. All uh, right, let's go. What do you uh, got? So. Maybe let's talk about this. You said uh, in, instead of all the technology, like just the social buy-in was impressive. To quote Matt directly to his face, he said that social fact that Bitcoin was accepted by many millions of people as having a lot of value might be the most impressive thing about Bitcoin, much more than the stuff about hashing. Yeah, I mean, like... It started at zero. Oh, yeah. Right? I mean, it's, it started like a guy typed it, yeah. you know, like he just made it up. Um, and, right, I mean, like, I started thinking these things when GameStop happened because, like, GameStop is so weird, right? And it's so, like... Undervalued. <laughs> like people will tell oh people will like have a fundamental story or they'll have like a weird technical story but like fundamentally GameStop is like a bunch of people on the internet were like we want to make this stock go up and then they did right and like in some ways that's like almost unprecedented because like everywhere else you, like every other bubble sort of leads with a fundamental story that gets kind of blown out of proportion and this kind of leads with just like it's fun to be on Reddit together and I don't know. I feel like Bitcoin is the precedent for that. Like Bitcoin is the thing where people are like, oh, just like a community of people on the internet can make a thing go up with no like cash flows or fundamental story. And that it's like, called the pyramid scheme. This has existed for yeah, it's not a Ponzi. This is what I hear a lot of people get wrong. If you you can't call the coins a Ponzi because because well you can, but a pyramid like and I don't mean pyramid scheme in the negative sense. I mean <laughs> No, no, no. It's a compliment. What I feel am I like I've said several times. I don't mean Ponzi in the negative sense. Actually, multi-level marketing is a better is a is a better way to say it. Meaning, what's the first thing you do after you buy a particular crypto coin? Recruit. Talk about it. You tweet. You it. Talk about it. Yeah, obviously. You you tweet it, and you immediately become an evangelist because the more people you tell about it, the higher likelihood you'll get other people to buy it and put the price higher. So it has a built-in MLM kind of vibe yeah. to it. Stock, you could argue stocks, GameStop sure. does also. All so, stocks do. 
Well, well fucks like do. Teens, right? like, you know, you like, need but, people to be using your product. I mean, more generously, you compared it to Facebook, which is like you just, if you so- told someone 30 years ago that there would be a company that's just monetized friendship, right. connection, that it would it would sound a little stupid, but that's like such a large part of our economy, our stock market now. But stocks generally, I mean, stocks are businesses. Like uh, the GameStop aside, like companies, stock prices are- A picture are, of a monkey can be a business. I guess so. <laughs> but we could also talk about policies like non- Ponzi, uh, not not Madoff esque, like Dror Pelek, who you linked to, yeah. wrote an amazing piece called Embrace of Ponzi's. And I don't think he was trying to dunk on crypto. He was just, yeah, this is, he was the serious. cat's out of the bag. This is how it works now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's well, like. Also, it's redu- you could do a very reductive, easily do a reductive argument like everything's a Ponzi if you think about it. And then people go, hmm. Well, that's dumb. Right. Everything has like the Too element far. of like, like anyone who buys stocks. Almost anyone who buys stocks is not doing it purely for like cash flows, but for like the hope that they could sell it to someone at a higher 100%. price, right? And like that, like you can sort of like isolate that element and like you know pump that element up, and then you get kind of crypto or, or frankly GameStop, right? But it's like there's always they all exist. Yeah, you know, if you if you want cash flow, buy buy a buy a vending machine. Right. But that's not why you're buying stocks. You're buying stocks because you think the cash flow will mean that other people will yeah. pay a higher price right. for it. So is a required and extra like you could step. easily, you know, have a situation where you think the cash flows will be below what the market does, but you think the price will be higher, right? And then you buy the stock, right? Like the- do, do you envision, as a result of this work that you've done, do you envision an evolution where the Ponzi element either gets regulated out of existence or enough people have lost money that nobody falls for it anymore? Yeah, and, I mean, I think we're- And then it gets more professionalized. So I think, yes, but I also think that, like, the Ponzi element, like, like, like what drawer products, like, like the Ponzi element is like a feature, not a bug in a way. Like, I mean, I think there are, there's this view that like in some of like crypto, there's like you have, or like in like web three, there's some token that corresponds to like some business or market or protocol or something. And you use the thing both because you like the service, but also because the token you think will go up. And I think that there's like, you know, like people make the case that that's like, like that is a Ponzi element, but like they make the case that that's good. That, that like allows you to start and scale a business. Well, that's you guys had a jaw dropping moment with Sam with Sam Bankman Fried oh, over yeah. the summer. That was, I think, the podcast of the well, that year. went viral. That, like, that was the that viral. was the top, right? I think that that was that was where we hit the. Do you think people listen to it right like, after oh. that? The altcoins crashed. No, but, like, yeah. but Matt was like, "Wait, I'm wait, hopeful wait, that I like, topped and bottom the, the Bitcoin market." I you hope. might have. Yeah. So so wait, so when Matt coin? When are we getting that? Yeah. No, hold on. So wait. That's so you, so you, so you guys were talking to Sam Bankman for you. Yeah. I wasn't there, but I love, I love that you've right. rep, like you yes. Are, it, was it, was Tracy. Tracy. it was Tracy, but we are fungible. Okay, you are not fungible. <laughs> shout out, shout out to Tracy. Fungible Tracy. <laughs> and he got into this tangent. I don't even think you guys asked him. No, I did. You did. All right. But I asked he went him about like how does it farming, and he was like, "Imagine a box, and it issues tokens, and then the tokens go up." But uh, yeah, it was no. But he was like, "Did he say bag of air?" People Whatever. will put no. tokens into the box and take out more tokens, yeah. and then other people will put more tokens in after, yeah. and that's yeah. like, that's that's the business. And uh, every <laughs> altcoin within like forty eight hours of that podcast dropping. Oh no! Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. You like you could look yeah. at a chart and look at the date that came out. You did it. Congrats. Well, you got the head of FTX to basically be like, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of there's a lot of altcoin Ponzi's, uh, basically. So very sly. Very sly. Was that your strategy all along? Like, I don't even think that he would dispute any of that. Like, I think that, like. He said it. He said it, yeah. No, like, (laughs) like your characterization, I mean. Like, I I just think that, like, uh, like, this is what I talk about when I talk about, like, the crypto financial system being, like, interesting. Like, like, he goes to Washington and is, like, our, like, model for credit on an exchange is better than what, like, the LME has when they blow up, like, the nickel market, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, you should use our financial system to trade stocks and like, you know, treasury futures yeah. rather than using the traditional financial system. Like, right. And, and, and then if you're like, by the way, are all these altcoins funds? You'd be like, sure. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> right. Well, cause it, it's some interesting. Good ideas, some bad. <laughs> it's like that. Yeah. It's like, yes, that's another thing that's also happening. Like we have, we have like real technology and yeah. then also there's like people. this penny stock circus going on. It's well, a market. Well, Matt, Cause Matt made the case that this, we, this is the, the era of modern databases, but the databases that we're using like are not so modern. 
And so crypto is trying to, or blockchain, whatever, is trying to. Yeah. yeah. And when I say databases, it. I mean like in like like things like like the you know the loan market where famously you fax confirmations over to trade loans, but also like you know the real estate market where you like sit in a room and like sign documents and file them in the in like the county clerk's office. So. And well, what about just banks? Like J.P. Yeah. Morgan has to talk to Bank of America when you want to send an ACH right. or whatever, and it's like that stuff. Once some of that stuff has been updated, or at least right. it was, yeah, I mean, the Citibank nine hundred million dollar mistake. Like, would that still would that have gone better? Tell us. It would have gone worse, right? I mean, the, the you need yes because you need mistake, like at least you need like judgment. Back. Yeah, you, right. you need uh, yeah. judgment. It, it's nice to have a di distributed ledger, and it's nice to have decentralization, and it's nice to have algorithmic rules versus like. Um, things written down on a piece of paper that have to be consulted. I completely understand all of that. However, when you send money somewhere, there has to be a human being whose job it is to let you like fix it if you make a right. mistake. It the the way that some of the um, the way that some of the bleeding edge crypto people think about it is the code is law, and if you make a mistake, it's That's an irreversible yeah. mistake. And I don't think that works for finance. I don't think so either. And I think if you look at like, I mean, like, there are definitely people who are like crazily into that perspective. Yeah, probably a small but, number, but they're loud. Yeah, not even a small number. Like, it's a big part of crypto, but it's not the only part. Okay. Well, trade corrections are a good thing. Like, yeah. to be able to yeah. undo something. Right. Is code, code is law. I'm just saying, code is law does not work with real human beings. Yeah, it just, it about. doesn't. And it's, you could argue that it Flip should until the cows come is home. that they would say that DeFi worked a lot better. It did. Uh, uh, when all of the things got liquidated and, and all of the loans to three arrows and all of that thing that like went kablooey, DeFi never, never got lied to. Why? And I think. What do you mean? Like there was no, there was no fraud? Like I think in DeFi there was a lot of I think like, we, automatic ahead. liquidations and like sort of like formulaic collateral where like. Uh, margin calls without margin so, calls. Yeah, you don't, you don't so think, everything kind of works. You don't have you know? to trust anybody in DeFi. Right. Whereas like in, in like, in like- I think it's the point. The like centralized crypto platforms like Celsius and Voyager are like, everything's great. And then like they filed for bankruptcy the next day. Well, all right. So this is an interesting thing that the crypto people say, and you maybe you agree with this. The collapse of Celsius and Voyager are proof that um, decentralization is superior because those were the two big centralized- Platforms and those were the two they that were had them. Too big. They're the two that went bankrupt, right? I mean, they're, yeah. They're, you know, I'm saying like, like Coinbase and FTX didn't go bankrupt, right? Like th those two went bankrupt. They were they were centralized. Now and they were and they were making human decisions. There was not it was not a blockchain that decided yeah. to give that hedge fund right. the loan they were, without looking at its documents. They were not. I mean, I would not say they were doing a great job of disclosing what those decisions were. But maybe that's the doing. point that like there are bad loans and not enough due diligence yeah. going on and t taking people's words for it, and none of yeah, that exists right. in DeFi. You said right. None of it exists in DeFi, but it's also it's like you know, does that exist in traditional finance? Yes, but also like traditional finance has some defenses against Celsius and Voyager because it's like regulated. It has like disclosure requirements. So you can kind of take two lessons from that. You can be like, it should be more like DeFi, or it should be more like regulated traditional finance. What about this idea of you wrote crypto built an efficient system to make the customers of a business also its shareholders? Yeah, which that's the Ponzi thing. That's to like, some people might sound dystopian, but like, what about early adopters of 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 uh, a podcast, for example, like getting to share in the fruits of the economic incentives or or growth that come along with it? As an example, maybe a bad one. Um, I mean, like. <laughs> the problem with this is it turns your podcast into like a little bit of a Ponzi scheme, right? Which is good and bad, right? I mean, like, yes, it like gets you listeners, right? But, but like the listeners that you get who are like, I'm in this for the money, like, mm, mm, it's like a mixed bag. Yeah, I don't, that's not a great example. A better example. What about bands with music? Yeah, look, I mean, right, again, like, I don't, like. Does every band need a token? Does yes. Does every band need a token? Like, <laughs> like, probably people made money, you know, like, and it's like hard to make money in the music business. And if like you have like some, bizarre new stream of revenue then great but like do you like do you need your relationship with music to be like i make money from listening to this music? no I but know, i think man. i think the one that they point to is like okay so the platforms for example uh uh, uh the guy that did gangnam style right um the billions of views right and the, the audience who watched billions of hours and all the money went to google youtube some of them, well i don't i don't know what the i don't know how much that guy made what was his name sykes Sy 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 i'm sure he's fine I think he's, he's fine. fine. But it is kind of like, you know when you discover a band early and you want the street yes. cred? It's that. So you want the thing to succeed because you're like, oh, I listened to this artist before everyone else. It's just the right. repurposing. A of lot of stuff cred. in crypto is like, is like, is um taking concepts like indie cred and like somehow trying to turn them into money. 
which is like gross, but also like- Here's the grossest thing that I think. You guys tell me if you could top this. The grossest thing about crypto to me is how much it resembles a classic stock market pump and dump. And yeah. stock market pump and dumps have been going on for 500 years. So it's not it's not like crypto That's the is unique thing. crypto. No, no, no. Where such and such famous venture capitalist yes. oh, yeah. yes. does an airdrop to 10 of their best friends and then makes the token public a week later so that their friends can sell out of it. They spend a week doing interviews and talking about how this token is the future. And the they're not even early adopters. Nobody's even using the token for anything. It was it's almost just like they're just marks. Here, I'm giving you this. It's gonna be worth a thousand percent more next week, and you're free to do whatever you want with it. And there's no regulation and there's nothing stopping any of it. It's not even disclosure rules. It's just so early that you can basically do that right now, and it is being done all the time. And yeah, although probably that's less the now because thing like people are not like well, not this week, no. Yeah, because it's, <laughs> well, not last week. Right. You know, it's like, it, it, like hopefully the popping of the bubble takes some of that. Out. Yeah, so this I'm not like crazy. accusing anyone of anything specific, but like there are notable examples yeah. of like new blockchain launching. Oh, guess who owns this at a penny? And now it's available to the public at a dollar. And the public thinks like they're early, but they're actually, they're the, they're the mop. Yeah. yeah. And there's some like lawyering around not doing that too egregiously these days, but yeah. <laughs> to agree, just do a little version just of this. Just do it subtly. Yeah. Um, all right. So anyway, you are beloved. And beloved. As, a re- as a result of this piece, I think you are beloved now by the crypto community even more than you already were. We found this tweet. I wanted to throw it up there. John, put up, my, put up the Star Wars. Tw- I'm sure somebody sent this to you. Oh, yeah. I've seen this. You've seen this? Yeah. Mary, have you seen this? I don't know. know. I'm going to show I you. I haven't even seen it yet. Okay, I'm seeing some cliffs. They're Here gorgeous. Oh, okay. uh, that's great. That's pretty great. Oh, that's wonderful. So, Matt C3PO. Of, <laughs> so these are Ewoks <laughs> carrying Matt as C3PO on a throne. <laughs> FX hooligans. <laughs> I feel like MA Twitter's too far behind. And the Ewoks oh. are fund managers, quants, sell side researchers, crypto skeptics, crypto maxis, fixed income. I mean, this, this is the reality. It's true. Matt is a Harry Styles. Should we frame finance? this in your home? No. I mean, uh, maybe. Josh, can we send this to him? Yeah, we'll, we'll, okay. we'll, I almost feel like we have to. Yeah. All right. Are we done with crypto? You want, you want to do, uh, you have any uh, any takeaways from crypto that we didn't get to that you discovered from writing the piece? None. No, c- the seriously? <laughs> Did you? <laughs> yes, there's so much more that you didn't get in the piece. Uh, any takeaways? I don't know. I mean, like, it's like, uh, like, uh, <laughs> uh, how many thousands of words were cut? Uh, and that oh, was so just at your thousands, first pass? So many thousands. Oh, they edit? They I, mean, I, didn't, I didn't write about, I mean, I wrote a little, but I didn't, like, the piece doesn't have anything on, has almost nothing on regulation. And like, did, you, did you get to NFTs in it? A little bit, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's when I knew the whole thing was bullshit, by the way. The whole thing, it wasn't I, the whole I'm thing. I'm pretty, I'm pretty mean to NFTs, because my experience of NFTs, like, is you You bought, stupid. you buy oh, yeah, NFTs? Yeah, so I've, like, own a bunch of apes. No, but, like, my experience of reading about and, like, seeing stories about <laughs> NFTs is that it's always, like, Demoralizing. some idiot being, like, uh, I got a painting and I lit it on fire and I made an NFT of it. Like, you know, yeah, you do that joke stupid. for the 400th time. Like, what? Like, it's so annoying. Uh, volume on the NFT marketplaces is down 90%, <laughs> yeah. uh, which right. should surprise Just very 90? few. It's like, yeah. No, it's not. It's like 97. 97%. Now, like yeah. Uh, it was I th- nice while it lasted. I night. think that element, though, is where things really got out of control. And that, I, I like that in hindsight, that should have been when you said, okay, this is. Yeah. And like the, the, the NFT as a, as a sort of technical concept is interesting, right? You can like try to like have different assets. Oh, I don't hate the concept. The class, yeah. But like, but like the NFT in practice is like cartoons of apes and burned paintings. And stuff. Uh, yeah. So I, I don't hate I don't hate the concept and I love art. I just felt the trading of these things it's, was, was it's crazy. still the numbers are still big. I'm looking at uh at Dune because they've got like uh analytics on this. Uh two hundred and eighty six million dollars in October. It's not nothing. Of NFT trading? Yeah, I mean it's down from four point nine billion at the peak. <laughs> Trading 4.9 yeah, but it's still two, it's still almost three hundred million dollars. It's not nothing. Yeah. It's, it's not, not zero. I don't no. understand. But yeah, I mean like I think people bought a lot of, you know. And there are stories about people who have paid like forty million dollars or something. And by the way, now it's like worth <laughs> well, yeah. forty bucks. A know? lot of that is so. Let's <laughs> if you look at if you look at ETH, it's not quite as low. Obviously, ETH has declined to the dollar, but two hundred two thousand ETH in October at the peak, it was uh, one point six million. So still quite a do quite the a um, do the celebrities that hopped on this the gravy train um, deserve the amount of scorn they're getting now? Weren't they just like doing what celebrities always do? Just 
hey, yeah, it's, I mean, it's money and it's a hot thing that people are into. Are they required to be regulatory experts? It's a good question. I walked past a, a poster of Rashida Jones with some credit card and I was like just looking in her poster eyes like, do you like this card? Are you yeah. happy that you're Do here? You actually use How this did card? you feel in this moment having your picture taken yeah. and knowing that everyone's going to see it? Like, I really like Rashida Jones, to be clear. But like, yeah, it's kind of not dissimilar. It's the same idea of just like, I'm going to monetize a little bit of my brand and just see how it goes. Like, they're not inventing the coins. No. Or maybe in one or two cases, but no. they're just like... Alec Baldwin didn't invent Capital One. Right. It's fine. Um, why did why did uh, Kim Kardashian get in trouble, but Matt Damon and uh, Tom Brady didn't? Sexism. Is Sorry, that what that it is? Sorry, that was easy. No, I just okay. <laughs> no, it's because she because she uh, put it on her personal Instagram in a way that made it seem like she was actually enthusiastic about whatever she was showing. Whereas Damon they were like on a commercial. Damon for didn't it. seem enthusiastic. They didn't even retweet their own. No, look, I hear you, but like they were on they were on commercials that were that read as commercials, and she was. Posting it on her personal Instagram, in a but way she that posts all ads person. on her personal Instagram. Yeah, no, look, I, I don't. She it's didn't say this is an ad, right? And think, they were on the answer, a yeah. they were on an ad. Is, yeah, is that something? But she always. I mean, I feel like I don't have that much fluency in Kim's Instagram. No, but, but I, I do agree. Think she I, has think, to I think it's a little. Ads. I think it's a little sexy. Sexist. Where she had, okay, like, I stand by my initial answer. Like I think you could you could have looked at her. You know how crazy this is. What would have been the difference if she just wrote hashtag ad? On the Instagram post. $25,000. Then she's, then she's what good. What was it fine? $250,000? Whatever it was. No, it's like a million bucks. She, Matt, makes, a, she we, makes that in 10 minutes. We haven't spoken about stable coins. Do they need to exist? Like, is Venmo good enough? Uh, I know I know those are different things, but. I mean, I think, like, this is, again, like, like stable coins need to exist for a crypto financial system. Because, like, the problem with crypto is that the coins are incredibly volatile. And if you want to have a crypto financial system that is useful for trading stuff, you want to be able to put dollars into that system. And connecting, like, the blockchain to, like, your checking account is 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 still kind of difficult, and so the stablecoin is the way to do that. I think it has to exist because nobody wants to pay taxes. Uh, yeah, there's probably some truth to that, right? If it's you like go if to you dollars, take money you out of the crypto money. system. It, it, if, if you go you, to stablecoins, you owe money, but like you do, but like who's necessarily reporting <laughs> who's, it? <laughs> no, right? yeah. who's paying attention? Well, who's like are you? You know, like yeah. if you're an anonymous account on the blockchain, are you reporting it to the IRS? Right? They're counting on self-reporting. Up until a certain dollar amount, and then they're telling the platforms over this dollar amount, we actually need you to furnish this. Yeah, but if you're like trading on a DeFi platform, you're not necessarily like like you might be. Matt, let me let not me, giving you criminal advice. Let me no. put you on the spot. <laughs> In terms of the vision that crypto people have for the future, zero to one hundred, do they get half the way there? Thirty? Seventy? I, I mean, I guess like one of the points in this, as I as I talk about this thing, is like there's no like vision that crypto. Have. Like there's a lot of different directions that people have taken crypto ideas in. And like some of these people are like, I'm going to build a fast trading system, right? And like those people, I don't know, like they might get 60% of the way there. Other people are like, El Salvador. They're like, you're going to own a share of every book that you read. And like those people like are like zero. Like right. if they're right, like I don't want to be here. Yeah, like that's terrible. <laughs> yeah. um, Doesn't it sound tedious also? Yeah, like that's what I mean. Like, yeah. th- why do we have to tokenize everything? Right. I get that some it's, things it would be cool if you did, but at, I think there's, I think there's like a sort of like dorm evidence. room impulse to be like, Faster oh, we can make money out of like everything in our lives, and it's like no, like you should sometimes just like not everything is not everything yeah. is finance. Right. All right, I'm with you on that. Uh, Elon and Twitter. So we did the sync thing, but like, what do you think is going to happen? I think Trump is going to be on the platform Saturday, Oof. and all hell will be breaking loose by Monday morning. What do you think? I've been talking to a lot of journalists that are like, wait, I think I've reached the end of the road. Maybe not just because of Elon, but like a lot of people, I don't know, collecting exit strategies and just like, it's not that fun anymore. I'm moving my Twitter account to Canada. What is the exit strategy from just, just, LinkedIn, just shut my up. Friend. Just shut up already. LinkedIn. LinkedIn, here we come. I'm very serious. It's the best platform um, right now. I made an exit from Twitter two and a half years ago. Yeah, you're a trendsetter. It, you're fine. Look at you. Life is better. Yeah. Like, not like, oh, I hate Twitter and I'll be back on it in a month. I never went back. Yeah. And I've admired your fortitude from afar. From you know what happens that's kind of that's kind of interesting? You become, like, more well-known if you have a big following and you just leave. Yes. Because people are like, what's up with that guy? Right. There are only two reasons a person leaves Twitter. Things are very bad or, or things very are good. very good. Yeah. Well, I mean, do you think that all the people that are like, oh, if, if he lets the Nazis back on, I'm done tweeting. They're still going to tweet. <laughs> Do you, I, mean, I mean, addictions are strong. Yeah. Do you know? Do you know of anyone in anyone uh, high profile that's like left and stayed off? Josh Brown. Josh Brown. No, only besides me. Uh, I know. I feel me. like I do, but like not. I feel like if you leave in a huff, 
you're back in 20 oh, I minutes. Don't, I don't leave yeah. like, like, I think like some people are like, okay, that's enough for me. Yeah. And they're yeah. fine. But like the people who are like, ah, I'm quitting tomorrow. Like they're not. And quitting. make a big announcement of it. Yeah. And yeah. You make an announcement. You're, you're back tomorrow. You had a great tweet though. Um, and so I do see tweets because what happens is I get all my Someone news. Someone prints from, them out and hands them to you. No, Google, <laughs> Google News. And then Google News is constantly sucking in stories. And like a third of all articles are about somebody's Bloomberg tweet. Terminal? Yeah. So what's that? <laughs> That's true. Almost every You're article is based on tweets. That's right. Okay. Um, Let's put up Matt's tweet. Uh-oh. Okay. Oh, I, this see, is, this people is took le- this, this seriously. I was joking tweet. and people got like, I people like oh my God. Or you, you said yeah, this Yeah, describe this, please. What are we, what's going on here? Okay. So, um, uh, uh, so <laughs> there were two ways, like at the end. I say the end, like who knows? Maybe it'll, maybe it'll still go wrong. Oh no, there it's, it's the be, end. There seemed to be two ways that Elon Musk could get out of the Twitter deal at the end. One was that like his banks would not finance it, which seemed very unlikely. And the other was that the U.S. government would block the deal because they worried national that it was a national security, security risk. Because Elon Musk spent like the last couple of weeks just tweeting Russian and Chinese propaganda. Yeah, which is like just like a total left turn for him. Like he didn't have a long history <laughs> of being like. A Russian asset. But then, like, for the last, like, two weeks, he's like, you know what? Russia really should have Ukraine. Yeah. Um, and uh, and people are no, like. No, he said, let's put it up for a Twitter poll. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, but he also, That's like, he, like, everything. had lunch with the FT. And they were like, what do you think about China? And he's like, I think China should own Taiwan. Um, it's just, like, bizarre stuff. Yeah. And, uh, and um, well, when, you see where, when, you, when you see where Tesla's profits Tesla's, come from, you, but, like, it's not why, that bizarre. No, no, I agree. Yeah. I agree. Like, this is, a, this is a longstanding worry that people have about him yeah. that he is too that he is too beholden to China. But the Russia stuff is kind of out of thin air. And uh the high high oil price is also good for selling Teslas. True. Yeah, but right. Right? So that argues for continued war, I guess. All right, but your but, tweet. But the point is that <laughs> the point is that people thought that he was doing this intentionally yeah. in order to go to the government into stopping him from buying Twitter, which he doesn't want to do in this theory. Um, and I don't think that's really true. And I, don't, I also don't think that like the government could stop him from like at this point, could like really they can't step stop in him time. from doing anything. Right. Apparently, has he DM'd you? I mean, I feel like I'm not Good supposed to comment question. on these things. Yeah. Uh, but like, all right, cool. I don't want to. I, I don't want to say that. He's like, like yes imply no. that I talk to him. Yeah. Um, say so we kind of hang out. But. Yeah. No, we don't. We don't. With, 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 with I Oculus, I think it's like reasonably clear that we don't. When he comes to Westchester, um, you hang out. Yeah, exactly. Okay. <laughs> um, but no. Uh, but so this is a story. There's a Bloomberg story about how like the U.S. like the Biden administration was considering whether they could do anything about Elon Musk. As a the headline is U.S. weighs security reviews for Musk deals, including Twitter buy. And you quote tweeted the article and you were like, OMG, he's going to pull it off. So How I many- didn't really think he was trying to do it. I didn't really think he'd pull it off, but I was joking. And that tweet went though. People were like, is this the worst purchase in the history of purchases? That's an exaggeration, but Facebook is down 70 plus percent. Snap's down a thousand percent. I mean, Snap's basically negative at this point. And this guy just top ticked the shit out of the stock. So his timing is really bad, but also like, um, I don't but, he, but he did sell Tesla. So it's actually, yeah, his actually timing is good. bad, but, um, he has some sort of long-term vision for the, like, Does first it? of all, I don't know, <laughs> but like, I don't know, probably not. No, but like, <laughs> you got the Beyonce button. Congratulations. Wait, no, he, he, wait, he doesn't have any plan. No, he makes not. it up as it goes along, yeah, but it, but but it like, usually like, works he's out. Good at, yeah, he like he's good at making money. Improv. Um, I, I think Tess, like I think Facebook being down, you know, because they've decided to go all in on like a legless metaverse, is like in some ways good for Twitter. Like, you know, still need to be a social network, and like Facebook is just burning its down. Um, but I don't know. Like the other thing about it is like it's like owning a sports team, right? Like he may or may not like end up making money from this, but like. I it's agree a with vanity that. Project I agree with that, that he enjoys. Like he's like think he's about, gonna own Twitter. He loves Twitter. Think, he about, loves think Twitter. about the scale. Like when a billionaire buys an NBA franchise, and everyone's like, "Oh, they're overpaying." They, he has right. the money. Yeah. That's what he it's, wants to use it for. It's different from an NBA franchise because, like, there is a market for billionaires buying NBA franchises. So and if you buy four. one and you're tired of it, you can sell it. And Nobody can buy it. Like, no one's gonna buy that. And Matt, that's it's right. four billion for an NBA team. Yeah, that's, that's forty right. for yeah, Twitter. Yeah, right. uh, so yes, but he's also the richest man in the world. Like, so, so not anymore. Yeah. So, so not so anymore. That that By the way, when, yeah. when does Twitter go public again? Uh, oh no! I mean, <laughs> it'll be merged with Tesla inside of a year. Oh, really? He said yeah, no. He so. said on the conference call. I know call. he said no. That's how you know it's going to happen. <laughs> are you do you, you not live on Earth? I think, Have you not I mean, watched that's anything? True, that's true. That's I, I think the answer is like oh, a he normal. Said no. <laughs> uh, I think the answer is a normal private equity. I think it's like three to five years. I think it's like a like a normal. Um, like he has he has co investors. 
Uh, and he also like, oh, wait, he's very so- comfortable running public companies, right? Or yeah. One really, but like, he's not like averse to being public. He'll sell the whole thing to SoftBank. No, I actually he think- to run it. He's going to take it public. He's going to sell, you know, 80% and he's going to remain like the sort of God King of Twitter while, you know, cashing out his money. I think he's going to double the revenue and That's I, not I'm not- it's not hard. That's my point. They're, they're barely they're barely trying all this time. So I think he can like double the revenue. But I don't know how if you can't grow the user base. No. Then I don't know how you go much further than that. Like if he just monetized it, the amount of views he has at the rate that let's say Instagram is monetized. But he, doesn't that mean that's a much more annoying experience for users? I think the whole, I think Instagram it's the most user? horrific experience you could have on the so planet. Then that's so that's less users. Already. So I don't know. I mean, I love Instagram ads. Like that's yeah. where I buy all my. That's clothes how you do your shopping. That's Michael's whole my wardrobe. Sister is. Says that. I yeah. do actually use those. Yeah, like, of course you do. What'd nice. you think of the but, What'd you think of the letter to advertisers today? I thought it was revolutionary. Oh, let's get into it. It, no, yeah. it was well written though. Yeah, I think he I made think he sense. has almost made sense. It's just like it makes sense if you stay in his mind, but the minute you leave and you're like, what does it mean to have a warm and welcoming place? That means moderation. All right, in the relentless pursuit, this is Elon. No, read the read the, the paragraph before. The reason uh, I acquired. The reason I acquired. The reason I acquired. I can't. The, yeah, I can. The reason I acquired Twitter is because it is important to the future of civilization to have a common digital town square where a wide range of beliefs can be debated in a healthy manner without resorting to violence. There is currently great danger that social media will splinter into far right wing and far left wing echo chambers Already that generate yeah. more hate and divide it for our society. Already has. I'll stop here <laughs> after this. In the relentless pursuit of clicks, much of traditional media has fueled and catered to those polarized extremes as they believe that is what brings in the money. But in doing so, the opportunity for dialogue is lost. All rational. I mean, yeah. Nothing controversial, really. Well, I reject the premise, uh, actually. Of which? Um, but I understand why. Which premise do you reject? <sighs> It's important for the future of civilization to have a common digital town square. No, I don't think so. I think we'd be better off if we didn't know anything about each other. Well, I mean, too fair. Late. Yeah, too I late. feel like we can put that. Uh, what if? On what if we did? Like, yeah. What if we didn't have Facebook or Twitter and we didn't know every person on Earth's opinion in real and time? Problems and every piece of violence unvarnished, the world? unedited. Is that? Nice. We don't live that way in the real world. I don't walk into a room and tell people exactly what I think of every subject under the sun. Why do we need to do it online? I understand why people would want to do that online. Of what benefit is that to, quote, the future of civilization? Yeah. I just don't well, see Well, we're it. not having the conversation. It's, it's out there. It's not coming back. I, I understand that, too. Um, there's, a, there's a story in the Bible about this. There, the, yeah. The, the Tower of but Babel. But how is he going to execute <laughs> the, tower of, the Tower of Babel. And, and God looked down and said, oh, this is a huge— Scrap it. This is a problem. Yeah. There's way too much, there's way too much conversation going on. <laughs> Knock down the tower and teach everybody their own language. But so how does Elon Good make Twitter a better place? Right. And without resorting to violence, I'm just curious what his definition of violence is because I don't – it is sort of a more of a spectrum than that allows, I think. Twitter is – I've said this before. It's a horrible business in the sense that it has no idea who I am as a user and I've only been on it for 15 years. They still serve me up uh, like women's deodorant ads. Like they have no idea who I am. Wow. Yeah, I, would I get a lot of like interviews with CEOs that I and I block them all. I would argue that the violence um, being incited on not just Twitter, all social media – is of a variety that we've never seen before. You could get somebody in Nebraska want to murder somebody in Pittsburgh. Right. That prior to the internet, that's just not a thing. Other than a serial killer on a on a cross country road trip, you didn't have people who wanted to kill people in other states. Right. That they had never met before and had nothing to do with. And the scale so, too, when you think about the way things travel now and, and get amplified. And the ability to organize genocide. The village idiot from every village yeah. is like for me. The future of civilization, the only responsible move here is to buy it and shut it down. So, I love that. Radical. You should – I, I mean, hope it's he's not, listening. It's not actually going to happen. So uh, so what happens this weekend? Does he like do some – because he doesn't do things quietly or, su- or in a subtle way. No, yeah, that's true. So we should all brace ourselves for – you're going to be writing this weekend, aren't you? What's Trump's first tweet back? Something about, something about Biden screwing Losers. up the economy or – uh, yeah, I mean, I just hope it's like a stock market, stock market tweet. Could be a stock market tweet. The Nasdaq has never been worse. Something like that. Your four hundred one ks are gone. Yeah, I don't know. What do you th- What do you think? You think Trump's back uh, relatively soon? Yeah, I also think that like he'll probably move like a little slower than. I just like 
he can't really get rid of everyone because like someone's got to keep the lights on. And so he's well, he like, said that moderation. Yeah. He had to tell the advertisers, yeah. "We're not going to let this devolve into a free for all." Right. I think he's got like a public persona that's extremely brash. I think he's like he is in real life. He's like brasher and moves faster than most CEOs. But I think he's not going to just burn it down over the weekend. Well, he also has a lot of friends with money in the deal, so it feels like socially there's some accountability. Um, Facebook blow up. What do we think? I mean, yeah. yeah. I can't believe we're all still using that stuff. I love it. Yeah. No, I don't care really one way or the other. I bought I bought the stock today. Oh, congrats. For like for like the, for like the, a goof. Okay, I yeah. Bought, I bought for lulls. Bit. Yeah. Uh they lost seven hundred something billion in market cap. Never happened before in the history of Look at that. Look at it's that. It's shocking it took this long. Look at this. Holy they lost moly. do you know they lost the equivalent of Berkshire Hathaway? Oh wow. I mean, they look. If you look at the chart, we're exactly back to where they were See, that when they ruined great, that the a great democracy. Tweet. That would have been a great tweet if I said. Yeah. If I tweeted. Uh, Do you want me to tweet it for you and give you credit? Can you put this up? Uh, Meta has lost the equivalent of one Berkshire Hathaway. I'll tweet that. Yeah. That's, I was, a, that's stale. Come it's on, it's a little out of character, so I don't know that my audience yeah, no, is going to be. A, a bad tweet. Oh, that's a good tweet for like uh, Charlie Bellello. Yes. Okay, you should. That's a Charlie Bellello tweet. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Um, wait. Yeah. So what do you what do you think of this? Is this like the big? Is this one of the biggest stories of the year? Has a, com- yeah. has a company this big ever imploded to this degree, this rapidly no. that you could think of? No, nope. the, answer, the answer is no. They weren't this Lehman big. Lehman was tiny, though, compared to this. Well, yeah, but I think the delta there, what was Lehman's final bankruptcy figure? It's not that far off. Well, this is you adjust for inflation. I mean, this isn't a bankruptcy yet. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think we're going there. I'm, know, just look, I'm just trying to slot a Lehman in there and see if it fits. You um, know what shareholders loved? They loved when he said, Reality Labs operating losses in 2023 will grow significantly. <laughs> Oh, cool. A lot of growth opportunity That's there. That's great. We love it. Yeah. We'll be focusing our energies. Oh, I was listening to the, the conference call, um, and he, uh, he said, this is a direct quote, obviously the metaverse work is a longer term set of efforts that we're working on, but I don't know. I think that uh, that is going to end up working too. I don't know. He said, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just be, hoping. Yeah, not you yeah. know, not to parse his words, but he said, I don't know. Yeah, it's so I think, like, I think it's, it's gonna so, work. So, so millennial to like <laughs> have a share have a share price dropping 25% and just be like, I don't know. I don't know. It could be anything. Right. There was an article in New York Mag that was somewhat compelling that like the reason that's going to work is because like middle managers at businesses that don't have better ideas are just going to be like, uh, everyone has to use Meta now, like in the same way that Microsoft Teams is like successful because we all just he can't to. even get his own. He can't even get his own employees to use it. Well, they're, the, they're spending a ton on the Oculus. Um, have you ever put one on? No, not not ever. Matt, you're not a video game guy, are you? Not I can't picture it. I, I have one. Oh, but yeah. I, I never hardly use it. There's not that much to do with it. I, huh. just, I could think of one thing. Wait, you have an Oculus. You an have Oculus like a, Rift from like years ago. Yeah. So the new one is fifteen hundred dollars. Who's the target market for that? Gamers. Crypto. People yeah, that got gaming. out of crypto at the top. Exactly. People that <laughs> listen to Odd Lots at the right moment. <laughs> uh, you wrote about Credit Suisse first Boston today. Oh yeah. Uh, if they resurrect, are oh, you doing the first Boston thing? Yeah. If they resurrect the first Boston name, does that uh, add? I don't know, twenty billion dollars to the market cap of the company. <laughs> <laughs> what, was, what was your? I didn't. I didn't get to finish your, gotta, your whole gotta, thing. Like, they're, they're, well, they're divesting it. They're not just. Revi- they're not just reviving the name. They're like, it's Collecting a little unclear the what they're doing, but I think they're kind of selling it to the bankers in some way or another. Wait, um, so they're going to spin it off, or th- they're going? I think they're going to keep a big stake, but they're going to they're going to make it somehow a separate company, which might be not a public company, but like a um, like a partnership kind of thing where they provide a lot of like the a joint venture. Yeah, with like the bankers. I think it's going to be an advisory business. I met a guy who bought the name EF Hutton. Nice. Oh, did you? Wait, is, yeah. is he the guy who's doing the Trump spec? No, I think I'm talking to him tomorrow. Actually, because the Trump spec was underwritten. I think. Oh, by it, yeah, e- it is. E. Hutton. Yeah, it's the. It's like one guy. He like, so he bought the name. I, f- I forget the. I f- he they're involved with the Trump spec yeah, in some way. They're the underwriters. But then they have an they have a also a financial advisory business, which sure. is what I spoke to him about, and. Sure they did. They uh they bought the name E. F. Hutton. Right. In ten years, will somebody buy the name Lehman Brothers? <laughs> isn't there Lehman Sisters? Or All that- Amazon. Oof. Isn't there down thirteen percent? Sisters. That's what it no. was. Holy shit! Oh my god! Amazon's down thirteen. That's that's not great. How much did they miss by? I don't know. While I'm looking that up, down seventeen <laughs> percent. This is, by the way, this is the listeners' favorite what part the of the. What the fuck is this? Is this Michael like, is returning in real time? <laughs> down seventeen percent. Is it? Where is the stock? 90? 
90 bucks, down 19%. What just happened? What do you uh, recession's back on. It's back on, yeah. What just happened? GDP's lagging. Um, while I look for this, Josh, we were speaking about this yesterday, Kanye West Essentials playlist disappears from Apple Music. I told you this was coming. He's being deplatformed. I told you Wait, that, he was, that would be He next. was supposedly like, wandered into Skechers and was kicked out. That's one of the funniest things I've ever story. heard. Incredible story. Yeah. Um, was he looking right. for a partnership? What happened? <laughs> no, literally. Ske- <laughs> so. ske- skeezies. Oh my God, that's so embarrassing. Skeezies. skeezies. They were going to do skeezies. Wow. Was uh, he carrying a sink? They were going to have lights in the heels. And maybe wheels. Um, okay, but those that like light up wheelie shoes are awesome. Yeah, so yeah. I'm glad that didn't work out. I, t- I said to Michael two days ago, I go, you want to know where the puck is going next? Spotify and Apple Music are going to be under pressure to get his music. And I'm not saying this should happen. I'm just saying that's that's the logical next. Th- but they might go a step too far by doing that. Yeah, Amazon I- is back to where it was in the summer of 2018. People still listen to Michael Jackson Holy on moment. streaming yeah. music platforms. There are a lot of people that, yeah. There are people who were born after he died that don't give a shit about Macaulay Culkin's sleepovers or any of that stuff. They just listen to the music. Yeah. I think there will be a bigger backlash pro Kanye if you try to kick him off Apple Music. People might be mad at what he said this week. Like, people still watch Braveheart. Mm-hmm. They Joe, might not Joe- like what he said about uh, so Jews why, and blacks, but you they still want to watch the movies. This is why you can't kill Twitter. Joe just tweeted, audible noises in the newsroom at that one. At Amazon? Amazon. <laughs> How much worse is it now? It's down 20%. I might buy it tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> is the John MacBook real or something that you guys made up to joke about? I can't tell. Is I that saw, really? I don't know. I read, I read Max's review. I didn't like I saw it in real life at the Amtrak station. Max Abelson reviewed it. News, yeah. All right. I saw it at the airport, which I think it means it exists. Yeah, but uh, at least one copy. But I was also like very hungover yeah. when I saw it, so I wasn't sure. He said, "Quote: I have fucking killed it. I knocked the cover off the ball in the financial world." Mm-hmm. <laughs> he said, "My life is perfect." He said, "My life is <laughs> wait. This guy's am- this guy's amazing. I've never met him. I was only I somewhat aware of him while he was working. Apparently, though, he was as popular as he says he was." Because people like used to talk about him like very reverently. Mm. Anytime I ever heard a story about John, everyone would tell you how they know him. Like people like, oh yeah, yeah. He's yeah. Woodstock. Yeah, yeah. Uh could you imagine writing those words and then sending them to the publisher? I have no I have yeah. not the cover off the ball person. in the financial. But I respect that there, you know, there are different kinds of people in the world. And like perhaps to become the CEO of a big bank, you gotta yeah. Be detached from reality. I can't tell if that makes me like him, want to read the book or not want to read the book. I, I assume any, the whole thing's yeah. a hagiography uh, anyway. Yeah, I've never liked a memoir, I think. But yeah. I would that, read the book, but it makes me like him that he was. That he like hit publish on that. Yeah. yeah. Did you picture him hit, like high fiving somebody <laughs> right. after saying that? Yeah. Yeah. It's cool. Like, I like that. Like, I hope someday that, I could write know? a book and, and say that I knocked the cover off of anything. Yeah, like, I think you can. Like, if you read a memoir and you're like, my life is perfect, like, like what, what more could you ask for? Well, no. So let me let me <laughs> qualify the my life is perfect thing because I, I read, I, re- I think I read a, uh, Max's review, but somebody said something like um, he's admitted to suffering from cognitive yes, yes, difficulties right. now, I, I, but I my life is perfect, much. like, in spite of that. Yes, that that's right. So that's stop right. trying to make him into a monster, Matt. No, no, I, I, I'm, I'm genuinely saying I like it. Like, I, I, I like the... The sort of wholehearted embrace of all right. So in conclusion, as well, yeah. In conclusion, <laughs> Facebook down twenty. Uh huh. You okay? Microsoft the down seven. Google down seven or eight. Uh, Amazon down twenty. We got I Apple in, in twenty minutes. Uh, <laughs> what? So so let's debrief on the Bond King. Yeah. So we Thanks, had you. Matt. We, Sorry. No, no. We <laughs> had you. It's in the dock. We were going here. <laughs> <laughs> we had you on on yeah. our YouTube channel, and yes. you, were, you were awesome. Thank you. I and, think y'all uh, moved a lot of products, so good. thank you. We definitely sold like a dozen books. Yeah. So, uh, just kidding. This is a very big plot. I don't know if you guys— No, it was huge. I'm serious. Yeah. Uh, I have knocked the cover off the You ball knocked the cover in, uh, off the book cover. In, in the financial uh, YouTube game. Yeah. Whatever. Um What's been so like? What's been the end result? When is the Netflix movie coming out? I know, right? Who's going to play Bill Gross? Will she has a whole okay. list of. Uh, I have yeah. a whole list. The is, list are is people amazing. calling you? Is it like, I mean, yeah, it's both moving like so slow. It's very confusing to me the Hollywood thing. Like, I feel like I get these emails that are like, 
we're working on it, but here's a list of every male actor over a certain age that you've ever heard of. And I can't tell what that means. I don't know what this list means, but I'm assuming they're all dying. It means one of them will say yes, the rest will say no, and that's who will get the part. That sounds right. Do you have you you have an agent shopping the book? Yes. Okay. Somebody that's sold books before? Yes. And productions have happened as a result? Yes. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. Are you excited? I'm really excited. You're gonna get points on it or something? I mean, yeah. I'm gonna try to write on it, man. Okay. So if they do the movie, uh huh. Is there going to be like a gun lock? And oh, are they yeah, going to there play up to that be. rivalry? Oh, they got to. Because Bill's love biggest that rival was like Muhammad and uh-huh. then himself. You know yes. who? That's not very cinematic. How is this for a Bill Gross? Well, what about Will Patton? This dude. What made you think of oh, that? Oh, I can see that. Oh, yeah. That's a good call. Okay. What made you think of that? Right? I don't know. Just, just, just pop away. Wait, yeah. what is he in? Uh, I mean, Armageddon for one. Armageddon. That's Halloween. Did I? Remember the Titans? He's in a lot of things. Okay, but have you heard? I don't hate that. Have you tried in your mind? Have you seen Love Actually? Yes. Love a actually. film called Bill Nye? Ooh. Oh. He's of a certain age. Yeah. Am I right or am yeah. I right? Yeah. yeah. He yeah. is of a certain age. Yeah. I feel like he's got the Who energy. Who plays young Bill Gross when he's scamming casinos at the poker table? Not scamming, but like. Um, good question. Zac good question. Efron. I thought about the like young one. a shirtless one. Zac Efron. Harry Styles. I hear he's really good at acting. Did you see the movie with Harry Styles? No, I'm too nervous to see it. It was really I th- bad. I can't tell if it's, it's feminist so or anti feminist. It so it's see, not good. Do you see movies? I don't see movies. Uh, but wait, I'm aware that there's a Weird Al biopic that's just like yes. entirely made up. That's Harry Potter. Yeah. It's just like jokes. Yeah. Um, you should, you should, if you're if you're writing the Bill Gross, you should just like make up an alternate life for him. Oh, I like that so much. That's a great idea. Like apparently in this, like Harry Potter is just really buff, and so he's just playing Weird Al as like a really buff guy. Yeah. Who, like, who, who plays Muhammad? Um, my top pick is Tony Shalhoub. I don't know who that is. That's Monk, just so, right? that's like, Monk, yeah. that's like so obvious, right? Yeah, it's too obvious. What about, um, did y'all watch no, I Severance? No, I don't mean in a bad way. No, yes. I love it. I'm already on board. Who's the, um, with the mustache, John, John. Totoro. Wait, he was in, he was in Severance, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he, but then. Oh. He, I was wondering if that yeah. would work. But then are you know. allowed to, though? That's what I, I don't think, I don't know his. Will they let, an, Italian, his, oh, will they let Italian? an Italian play somebody I was going to Wikipedia that before I rolled it out publicly. Somebody of Middle Eastern did. descent, they might not allow it. Well, see, Tony Shalhoub's like Lebanese or Armenian, I forgot. Because already. like 10 years ago, you know who would be great as Muhammad and could probably almost completely embody him? I, I was that. I was going to say. Uh, Jared Weta. Yes. Yes. Uh, he can do anything. Riz Ahmed could play Muhammad. No. Um, what's his name? From Gangs of New York and uh, like the Oh my best God, Daniel Day Lewis? Daniel Day Lewis. He retired. I know, but I wanted he's him like for Bill Gross. tall, thin, handsome. Yeah, he could grow Muhammad's a mustache. Like, yeah. he, he, like he could do it. Oh my God, let's get Daniel Day Lewis. But you're not allowed. You can't, I don't think you could do I that I think, anymore. listen, if he method acted Muhammad, I think it would be pleasant. Like that's not a bad life to have method act. You know, you're just like living in Southern California. You're like eating food. Like they that's let Ben fine. Kingsley a million years ago play Gandhi. That could never happen today. That could never. That we saw never Muhammad at an ice cream shop, and uh, he's like the nicest man in, in Newport the, Beach in the yeah. world. Yeah. yeah, he's the anti Bill Gross. Yeah. Why don't you do a book on him next? No. The Did Bond you read Prince. my? You should read the book because uh, <laughs> he <laughs> was Christmas. he was less nice to me. I would say. He was. Than, no. Well, yeah. Can you understand why? Yes. Okay. Like, would you have been, if you were him, would you want to have anything to do with that I would have been nice to me because I'm a nice person and I like to play fair, but. If only the world worked that way. (laughs) Indeed. You're you're very sweet, Mary. Thank you so much. Uh, What what else do we want to do? You have GDP in the dock. Uh, We could skip it. It went up. Right? We could skip it. It went up. I'm happy. We usually do this thing to close called favorites. And basically what we're asking you is, I know you don't see movies. What are you watching or reading or listening to that you think the audience would uh, be into? Bluey. Uh, I'm I'm exclusively going on podcasts to talk about crypto, so you should read crypto. Um, you I read no- you read novels. I do read novels. So do I. Nobody else does. Just you and I. Really? Who's your favorite novelist? My favorite novelist. Wait, can you actually? I sorry, we read the New York Times column about you. Can you tell the story of the book that changed your life and got and made you want to become a writer? Uh, wait, I feel like that's overblowing it, but I feel like the book that is, <laughs> well, that's what that is said. mentioned in the Times article is, uh, is, uh, is, is, um, The Mezzanine by Nicholson Baker. That's right. It's just like a book that- They made it like it was your, yeah, bi- your like, Bible. I, mean, I probably, that's my you. fault. But no, okay. I read it like in high school and I was like, I didn't know that you were allowed to do this. It's a, it's a book about a guy who works in an office and he breaks his shoelace. And so he has to go out to get another shoelace during his lunch break. And then he takes the escalator back up to the mezzanine where his office is. And that's the plot of the book. And it's so good. And it's yeah, got yeah. all these footnotes and it's crazy. And it's like very interior. And I was like, I didn't know you were allowed to do he's, that. It's like a, a guy's like his inner monologue yeah. while he's going to he's replace like his shoelace. about like, you know, like, like 
toothbrushing. And like, so like 99% like, of people who would read that book would be pissed off. <laughs> and you were like, like I, wanted, I want to do this. People like that book, but like one like joke that is right in the book is like it gets like increasingly long and baroque footnotes, and I was like, I, don't know. So, I, don't know. I read <laughs> uh, I read two chapters of a Delillo book, okay, and I said this this is a practical joke, like some somebody's somebody's messing with me. This can't seriously be a book, but apparently there are people that want to read uh, uh, that way. All right, so that was the book that you said I, I want to sure. write. Well, I don't know. I mean, like that's probably an exaggeration, but sure, yeah. Let's say, idea. yeah. Let's say, There's yes. There's like six yes. paragraphs yes. on this. In no, the- look, I mean, I'm just, it's my fault. I, I told her that. Like, I do. I, I, yes, yes, I did like that book a lot. It did. <laughs> it did. You know, at the at the time of that profile, and frankly, like for much of my career, I've written a lot of footnotes, and people are like, where did you get the idea to do footnotes? And honestly, and you were the like, I was a Harvard lawyer, asshole. But like, uh, <laughs> yeah. I was a lawyer, but like, uh, but no, also like, like the mezzanine was where I learned that you could like make footnotes as a joke, right? So I don't know. But that's your writing. Your writing style is so much exposition, but not inside of the column in the footnotes. Yeah, okay. But there are people that love the footnotes sure, as much as they sure. love. Try to do the jokes in the footnotes. Yeah. I feel like this 100%. is David Foster Wallace erasure here. Well, you say that, but <laughs> but but I am I am the eraser because like in fact yeah. I didn't I was not like you I do know. like David Foster yeah. Wallace a lot, but I don't I didn't like like that's, he didn't like, become part I of your read, soul. He killed himself. I read it after yeah. David I Foster Wallace. What? Yeah. What, Infinite Jest? Yeah. yeah. I never read that. That also sounds like good. One. It's really good. It sounds like it would piss me off, though. It would piss you off. Right. Yeah. It's very long. It's like circular it's like and than the self-referential. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, so I don't, really good, I don't like do that to myself anymore. I'm not that literary. You should uh, carry it around, though, and read it alone at bars. And no, that, 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 that doesn't work anywhere. Matt, no, no, no. You would get in a fight. It'd be fun. Your oh, writing guy, reminds yeah. me of Chuck Klosterman. Okay. Which is one of my favorite authors. I like that. You know, I have not read a lot of Chuck but I like Like I'm I'm a fan. I like his thing. So David Foster Wallace is your favorite novelist? No. Uh, uh, you're going to get canceled. I don't have a favorite novelist. Okay. Really Yours is Gary Steingart. <laughs> I had lunch with him yesterday. He says hello. I love him. Yeah. Uh, that's mine too. Yeah. Uh, he lives by you, right? No, he lives further up. I uh, further up. I like further up. Have you guys heard of Dan Brown? <laughs> his master class. My friends say his master class is the best. I don't doubt uh, it. Actually, my favorite author is uh, John Mack. I don't know Wait, if hang on. Will you say you love Dan it? Brown too? Uh, Who doesn't? I, I read uh, da, Vinci Code. da Vinci Code in like Two hours. So I, much fun. It's like, a good this book. This is incredible. It's yeah, so well done. Nothing wrong with it. So, no, that's just, he's like, a good, he's like, good at his craft. He's a genius, right. He's a genius, like. His books are movies. They're fun. Business man. Yeah. <laughs> business <Yes>. man. <laughs> Not every book you read has to completely alter the way you think about the world. Sometimes you just want to but read that a, one is a, a good story. one for like. That actually I, kind of I, altering I, the way. Yeah, yeah. Right. This is the like, most animated he's been. Told me the love, Da Vinci Code. He's so book. excited. It actually book. did change my worldview on religion. Yeah, it kind of like, it's like a good, like, like. Galaxy what he brain. did was he picked a good like um, like bit of lore, a bit of like conspiracy theory, and like blew it into a like a sort of thrown together novel. What's your favorite finance book? Oh, my favorite There's finance a right book. answer. It's got to be Liar's Poker. Uh, There's a lot behind it's me. Probably if you Liar's just... Poker. It's got to be Liar's um, Poker. That's like your. Th- that's like your. It's like the Bond King. I'm right here. <laughs> So the Bond King, Liars Thank Burger. You. Matt's four different bikes. The Bond, the Bond King. Liars How one Burger. man. Ma- all right. Uh, uh, I really love Barbarians at the Gate. I, 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 the, the, oh, that was a good one. That book that, Barbarians that, at the Gate. That people have not, like that, that is not at the level of like the Bond King or Liars Poker in Thank terms you. of fame is that I love and I recommend to people is called Diary of a Very Bad Year. It's a. Uh, oh, I remember Roth, Steve Roth. No, it's uh, it's um, diary of a very bad diary year. Diary of a very bad year. It's um, it's it's put up by N plus one, the literary magazine. Uh, I think Keith Gessen is like the sort of name on it, and he interviews a person whose whose name in the book is anonymous hedge fund manager, and anonymous hedge fund manager basically like sits down for a long conversation with him every like three or four months during the financial crisis. Oh wow! And it's just describing it's a, it's like it's like his take on the financial crisis, but it's also just describing like and like embodying like the life of a hedge fund manager and how a hedge fund manager is thinking about the world in a way that is like really interesting. Do we know who it is in real life? Uh, I, I know we, who it is. We, I think you it, know who the subject public, is. Yeah. I think it became public. Don't say it now just in case, but I think it came David out. Einhorn? Yeah, that's right. My understanding is that, I, I don't it's know. It's Bill Ackman. I don't, I don't think it's public. By the way, I, I was thinking of uh, The Great Depression and Diary when you said Diary. That's the book that I was thinking oh, okay. of. Yeah, that was good. Diary um, of a Very Bad Year. Yeah. I never heard of this. I never heard of that either. Right, no one's heard of it. What's, what's your favorite uh, Wall Street movie? 
Like, what movie do you think is the uh, best? I just watched. Margin, Margin Call. Call. I just watched Margin Call. That's what everyone says. It is the best. It's clearly the best. It is the best. It's not a movie, but yeah. industry. It's the best. For, for Are people watching in the show, in Michael's oh big God. industry guy. Oh, my God. Oh, my. Am what are I you right? doing? There's too many. Get, in, uh, get involved. There's, there's too much nudity and sex. I knew you were going to say that, and I was going to make fun of you for you it, talking? but I feel like you're right. That's not the reason I'm not watching it. I started it, and I just don't have time. Yeah. What? I know. You make time. Get, okay, get so back. it gets better. Like, I feel like it starts strong, but it gets better. So, like, I would recommend when you find time to stick with it. No, I, I will. That's one of the things that I will one day sit down and just watch them all at once. Season two yeah. is terrific. It's also a little triggering. Like, I was, like, so happy to be back in, like, the structure. Like, I feel like Bloomberg structures itself like a bank. So, I was, like, felt like I was in the newsroom slash trade floor again. And I was, like, oh, my God. That, but it also, it's it's very cozy and triggering at the it's same a time. Lot of, there's a lot of realism yeah, and not realism show. as well. Well, no, of course, because otherwise it'd be unwatchable. She should have gotten fired at least fifty times. Yeah. Working yeah. at a bank is yeah. Te- yeah. working at a bank is mostly tedious, yeah. punctuated by yeah. once a year. Oh my god, they're going to fire us all! Right, right, right. And like, she has that every day. Yeah, yeah. So there is there is a new book out. Um, one of my favorite books is called "Devil Take the Hindmost" by Edward Chancellor. and he just wrote a book called "The Price of Time," which is a history of interest rates. So a pretty timely book. Mm-hmm. So you, did you start it? I I read the the prologue. Can I steal it and, not, and forget to return it when you're done? No. <laughs> Michael doesn't lend me books anymore. Because you lost them? Well, once I ate over No, a book. you were telling me a oh, book. fair that, enough. Like, <laughs> I lost your nails ink and I'm still sorry about it. If you lend someone a book and you get it back and there's like food in it. At least you get it back. Or stains, it's, uh, no, just throw it out. I don't even actually want to acknowledge that you ever touched my book. Yeah, fair. Um, here's my favorite. This is so weak. Now that I just said <laughs> I don't have time to watch uh, Industry. I got sucked into Handmaid's Tale. I know I'm five what? minutes, five years late to this. Yeah, it is awesome. It is what you don't like it. No, I had to tap out. I, I when was did like, you why tap? am I hurting myself? When did this? you tap? When did you tap out? Season two. Josh Horrific. needs to feel something. Horrific. Yeah, you're torturing yourself. I get that. Okay, it is torture. Yeah. Do you ever see this shit? No. Do not. You would not. You would not. No. Uh, <laughs> Why am I so into it? Does that say something bad I'm, about me? I mean, I'm a little worried about you, but you did leave Twitter, so I feel like you're okay. It's one of the shows, though, that if you're negative about the future, it yeah. like, confirms everything that you think is happening Oh, yeah. Now. No, I mean, she drew from, I don't know, I can't speak to the current seasons and, and the, you know, straying from the book, but, like, she drew from real things that all happened. Yeah. Uh, it looks like they pulled forward the headlines of today. Yikes. Back into 2018 or whenever it started. I hate that. So, anyway, so, I, I got sucked in. Great. So this is something. Zero Hedge just tweeted. X A X A Zero Hedge, Hedge X- our old friend. X A W S. Amazon had a negative profit margin and they did over a hundred billion dollars in sales. That is impressive. So they made it up on how? The volume. How? They what are they? How? how? The, the old fashioned. What do you mean? Somebody how? did it. Do you ever buy things on Amazon? They're twenty percent less than you would buy them anywhere. They're else. not even. Yeah, not also, even. It's true. Like, I buy things for four dollars and then I get a big box in a twenty big minutes. Box, and I'm like, right. What are you doing? This can't be a good business. So I guess investors don't like uh, all that bleeding money in this economy. Is Apple out yet? No, I think it comes out at four thirty. All right. Well, we'll we'll wrap. Oh, do you have a favorite for us? What do you got? Industry. Industry is yours. My favorite book about finance is a novel. Hello. Go. Trust by Hernan Diaz. Okay, what's that? Who, it's a. Uh, I, I was calling it a triptych, but that's not quite right. I think it's four different perspectives on a bond trader in the early 1900s and the way he traded through the depression, and then kind of different perspectives on his life and his life. I'm really glad it's not a triptych because I don't know what that word means, and I would have had to ask you. But so <laughs> Three, it is. But now it's so, four. You're good. No, I don't want to know. So it is. Uh, did you guys have fun today? Yes. Yeah. Like the maybe like one of the best times you've ever had on the podcast. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Matt sounds like lukewarm on this. Second. Much better. This than whole my experience, own podcast. yeah, was just so. <laughs> no, sad. this is him being enthusiastic. <laughs> this is really good. No, I know. Oh, this is the fun. <laughs> it's great. It's great. Listen, we've, the we, crowd loves us. It's a standing we, ovation. We are huge fans of both of yours, and together, I feel like you guys, in some way, it's like better. We had the circle for a long you. time, so, so yeah. we we've Thank been excited for this for a long time. I want to tell everybody where they could subscribe and follow. We want to make sure people read your article. What is the name of it uh, again? I think if you go to Bloomberg.com slash The Crypto Story, you'll find it. It's the only – no, you could just go to Bloomberg.com. It's the only thing they're talking about this week. They changed their Twitter background to your article. Did you see that? No, not my face. Um, It's Mario Draghi. They should let you guest tweet from the at business account for a full day. Would that be fun? Uh, no. No, you don't. <laughs> okay. Uh, Matt Levine, you're on Twitter. You are at Matthew I'm Levine. at Matt underscore Levine. Underscore. No, that's the best you could do? Ouch. Yeah. Underscore? Underscore? It's time to leave. Who has late. real Matt Levine? I don't know. 
Talk to Elon. Yeah, All right. That's Ma- that's a good point. You are yeah. Mary in America. Oh, that's my Instagram. On Instagram. My but what is your Twitter? Twitter is MDC. At, uh, whoa. Thank you. Bad. Thank Monogram. You. She's, Appreciate she's, you. She's At awesome. MDC on Twitter. And tell us uh, when we could listen to your show. How often are you... How often are you on the air? Oh, on uh, NPR's Planet Money. Uh, I don't know, like once a month usually. Okay. Maybe twice. Any any yeah, good twice. guests coming up? Anything going on? Yeah, I'm working on a show where we're making the Fed's acquisition of its various tools into a video game. Okay. So I like it. Is it play to earn? <laughs> yes, of course. It's a Ponzi. Uh, I haven't been on in a while. Come on down. So did you forget that I'm around or no. do I have to tweet? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes. We I only wanna, get guests from Twitter. I want to come on your show to promote my show. Would that work? Would they I let me? I think so, but we have to issue, we have to mint something. See, I'm trying to come on her show to promote my thing. Oh, you haven't had him on with his crypto No, issue? he comes on all the time. Oh, it's okay. just I haven't had him on the show. Got it. Yeah. All right. Well, yes. listen, you guys are you guys are awesome. We loved having you here. Thank you so much for coming. Much appreciated. Do we have any announcements to make? Uh, I have a review if you want to hear it. Let's do it. So this is the part where we selectively cherry pick one thing nice that somebody has said about us. We haven't done this I in a while. That. Yeah, let's let's do a review. Okay, Gratitude so uh, so this one's from TPFIV, and it's a five star rating. <sighs> My mom. <laughs> <laughs> it's a five star review, and they say top two financial podcasts, top one intro. Can't decide between Animal Spirits and the Compound and Friends, oh, okay. but hands down, my favorite podcasts are coming from the Rihols team. I look forward to the three claps on my Friday morning commute. The intro song has no right to go that hard. That's true. <laughs> that, the intro, Someone arrested. That intro song does slap, and we play it as an outro. Let's go. Let's go. All right, guys. Thanks so much for listening. We will see you next week. <laughs>